Good morning, Alan. Uh, we're just getting underway. All right. I just realized I'm muted. <laughs> I, good morning. I realized it was a long evening today. So, no yeah, problem. long evening, right? That's why. So people are just getting upstairs. So we'll no up. rush. Okay. It's a shame I'll be coming back down in two weeks. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. We're slowly gathering, and I'm going to start the uh, learning sponsors as we get seated and get underway. All right. That way we'll be able to move along. A uh, year of learning by Sue and Arnie Gerlich in memory of Malka Proman and Philip Mann. And Yisro David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch and Beryl Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch. Yosef Meyer Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch and Henya Rivka Pro Rosna Bat Arav Tzvi Hirsch. In memory of family murdered in the Holocaust, Arav Tzvi Hirsch Ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Ben Ephraim, Yisro David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bat Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Bat Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Tessel Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Sharon and Fred Liska, their family and many friends, in memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman El Bat Yaakov. Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedell, Irving and Pearl Kaplan. Friends of Avi Gitler, Avi Meir Ben Shimon, and Martha Gitler, Chana Bat Yeshaya. Children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren of Toby Paris, Sarah Toba, but Yisrael Dove in her memory. Friends of Joe Wolf, Yosef Ben Chaim, Charlie Gelfenstein, and Sam Levine, in memory of Ramona Levine, Rachel Mata, but Asher. Friends of Nina Moynester, Nechama Azna, but Yitzchak Aharon. A month of learning by the Boca Babes, in memory of their dear friend Susan Workman. Chaya Sarah Bar Alta Yosef, Chaim and Phyllis Reese, in memory of his father, Mordechai Ben Yom Tov Lippa, myself, wife Karen, and friends, in memory of uh, mother, Nechama Bat Moshe HaKohen, Charlie Gelfenstein, in memory of his father, Meir Ben Yaakov, Marsha Federbush, in memory of her father, Menachem Mendel Ben Shlomo, Ruven and Susan Podolsky, in memory of his mother, Fravel Bashraga Fivel. Phyllis and Chaim Reese, in memory of her father, Pinchas Ben Avraham, Rebecca Lewis and Susan Watonsky, in memory of their aunt and sister, Miriam Bad Yosef Udvora. Today is the 29th. Therefore, we have a day of learning by Martin and Sandra Fish, in memory of his mother, Tziva Bad Eliezer, by Judah Klein, in memory of his father in law, Peretz Ben Moshe. And by Leonie Meiselman, in memory of her father, Chanach Zundel ben Chaim David Shmuel. May Mishem was having Aliyah, Krank Rafia Veldi Yashir Hashem Atalia, and Machol Bene Israel, a good Gaben Shia. And may everybody have a Freilich and Hanukkah. Right? Okay, so we'll start us off with uh, something a little bit on the lighter side for Hanukkah. That wasn't the palm lighter side, you know. Okay, <laughs> okay. Who can who can tell me the most famous cartoon character associated with Hanukkah? Peanuts. No, Popeye's girlfriend. Olive oil. Olive oil. <laughs> Okay, I got a different one for tomorrow, it's okay. 
All right. We are on Yud Vav. Yud Zion. Yud Zion, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, Steve, uh, can I get a ride home? Thanks. Okay. All right. Al Harishona, second line on the Amud, Yud Zion, right? That's that's where we're going to start. All right. Al Harishona, who Omer Misha Ana et Avraham Vachule. Okay. So we were saying that the Chazan HaKneset was the one who repeated these uh, statements, right? And so as we go on with the Gemara, we're going to continue to see what was the situation there, okay? Um, guys, anybody from, uh, from Yarmouth, check on Marty, okay? Marty went. Oh, yeah, to... oh, okay. So you guys are okay. All right. So that's the reason. Okay. Yeah. We'd like to keep an eye on each other, right? Okay. Tana, Sam, by the way, I understand, uh, is in the hospital. Sam Cohn. Yeah. Okay. Tana Yesh Machlifin Saaka. Okay. So in other words, the Mara is telling us there are those that switch the order of some of these uh, blessings, right? That change the order, the, well, namely the one dealing with Sa'aka. The, the name. The name. So, well, okay, that they're going to, one, one says, okay, where we saw it said Tefillah, they switch it to Sa'aka. Where they saw it said Sa'aka, they switch it to Tefillah. That's what the Gemara is telling. La Eliyahu, to the statement that was associated with Eliyahu, Utfila the Shmuel, and the one that was associated with Shmuel with Tfila to Shmuel. Okay, so remember we saw the Chatima of each was associated a certain way, and that's what the Gemara is telling us. Bishlem Agabe Shmuel. Okay, regarding the example of switching one language. To another with Shmuel Ktiv Beit Fila Uktiv Beit Saaka. It was both written Fila and Saaka in regards to Shmuel. Right? So that's acceptable. Right? El Agabi Eliyahu, Tfila Ktiv, Saaka Loktiv. But there the phrase Tfila was used, but we don't find the use of the phrase Saaka associated with it. Okay? So that's a little problematic, says the Gemara. Right? Why? It's not written. It says there, Aneni Hashem Aneni, okay, in Malachim Aleph. And that is Lashon Sa'akahi, says the Gemara. Okay? All right. <clears throat> now, what about the next one? Al Hashishit, on the sixth one. Right? Who Omer Mishana et Yonah, okay, referring to, right? Al Hashviit, who Omer, Mishana et David, Chule. That was for David and Shlomo. And now the Gemara is going to get into a historical question. Michdei, Yona Batar, David, Shlomo, Hava. Since Jonah was after, okay, David and so on. All right? Hava. Right? My Tama Mak. Right? My Tama Makdim Le Beresha. What was the reason that they put in the order of those prayers, right? He gave them first. Because he wanted to conclude in the Khatima, okay, at the end that Hashem would have Rachamim on the land, right? On the Eretz Yisrael. Tana Mishum Sumchus Amru. And they said in the name of Sumchus or Sumachus, okay, they said, Baruch Mashpil Haramim. Okay, that he taught, okay, that he taught the closing, right, was a little different, that Hashem uh, lowers those who are proud, who are em. Okay. But they still keep it in the same order. Yeah, but that way, they, they didn't change. change their land to the right. Yeah. The yeah. Okay. Okay. A new piece. Gemara sells us. Shlosh ta'aniyot harishonot an shemish mar mitanin velo mashlimin. He said the first of the three sets 
of public fasts, right? Okay, that the people of the Mishmar, of that uh, charge, that station, that group, okay, they would fast, but those of the, right? But they didn't finish the fast. Tanu Rabbanan says a brighter, Mepne Ma Omru, and Shemish Mar Mutarin Lishtot Yayan Belelot of Alobiyamim. Why did they say there in that section that they were permitted to drink wine at night and not during the day? Why? Shema, what happens? Shema Tichbeid Ha'avoda Al Anshe Beit Av. It might be that the work is onerous or heavy or difficult for the particular Beit Av, the patrilineal family assigned to the Avoda that particular day, and they would need help. And he would, they would need to come and help them. So the Gemara says again, Why did they say that those of the Beit Av, those who were particularly on duty that day, to do the service, the avoda, they could not drink wine neither day nor night, right? Because they are continuously busy, I'm going to say, <coughs> with the service, sacrificial service. Okay? And remember, there are particular points, as Michael just pointed out, that were done in the evening as well. Okay. All right, going on then, Mikanamru. From here, it's possible we might say, Kol Kohen Shemakir Mishmarto, who Mishmeret Beit Av Shalo, Viodea, right? Shebate Avotav Kivuin Sham. Okay, any Kohen who is familiar with. Okay, this is, of course, he, he has to sort of do a, a little bit of a genealogy, genealogical uh, reference in terms of where the status of his Kohen family, which was their, uh, right, which was their Mishmeris, right? Mishmeris which was Beit Av, which knows when they were in this cycle, right? Okay, if he knows where they were in the Kohanic, I'll call it cycle, right? And he knew, okay, where they were set. In other words, to serve in the avoda. Asur lishtot yayin kol otahayom. They were forbidden to drink wine that whole day. Okay. Now, just remember, this is we're talking about the time there is no base hamikdash, right? Whatever, how many years afterwards? But if they knew. Right, if they had a Masora from their family, okay. However, the Gemara continues, but Makir Mishmarto, if he knew where he was in the Mishmeret, in the station, so to speak, the Ain Makir Mishmeret Beit Av Shalom, but he doesn't remember, or they haven't kept exactly when they which were family? which yeah. family, okay. Viodea Shebatea Votav Kvuinsham. But he still knew that his family was inclined and associated with it, right? Asur lishtot yayin kol ota Shabbat. They were forbidden to eat, to drink wine that particular Shabbos. No, week. Week, that, that week, week, that week. Right, let me make a note there, All right? Okay. And furthermore, a noma kir mishmarto. Another case, if he did not remember, right, that his mishmeret, or mishmeret beit av shalo, or his uh, patriarchal family date, okay, viodea shabate avotav kfuinsham, but he knew that at some point they were associated with the carrying out of the avoda, right? Asur lishtot yayin kol hashana, they were forbidden to drink wine. The entire year. Okay. Now, Rebbe Omer says, Rebbe Omer Ani says, Rebbe, Asur Lishtod Yayin Lolam. He should be forbidden to drink wine, whatever, all the time. Avalma Easer, what can I do? Shetakanato Kalkalato, that his 
I'm going to phrase it, his advantage is his misfortune. Okay? So there are multiple explanations to this. One might be that his fortune of many years without the temple, and therefore that the prohibition of wine could not be maintained. Okay? So that could be one possible explanation. There were others too. Might say that it was oh, his own misfortune of not knowing Okay, was his his uh, advantage? Yeah, it also could be means we don't know which mishmar. In other words, there's no rational reason to believe that when the base of mishmar is restored, that they would reinstitute the old schedule. That's that's another possible right. So there are multiple explanations to say why it was that. That the disadvantage of not being able to whether have the avoda or to know the mishma, all of these things worked out to an advantage for him. Sit in hell. Right? This is okay. a loophole. <laughs> <laughs> Amar Abai says not. The problem with him is hungry. He has a move. Right? He's got a move, which is well, then, then, then he is from the Right. That's a different issue. But that's not totally true. Right? Because there were certain chores that they could do. He could cut, chop the wood. <laughs> right. No, but we'll let you chop the wood, Sid. All right? Yeah. Okay? Things like that. Okay? Amar Abai. All right? Keman. Okay? Keman Shatu Haidna Kahani Chamra. According to whom is it that today? Kohanim can drink wine, ki Rebbe, so you can thank Rebbe every time you make Kiddush, you guys. Okay? Okay, and shame Mishmar, but now a new piece. And shame Mishmar, but and shame Ma'amad. Okay, that was the Kohanim of the Mishmar and the Israelites who were part of the Ma'amad at that point, right? Asurim Lesaper, they're prohibited, said the Mishnah. To, to cut their hair, or to wash garments. But on Thursdays, they could do the laundry and get a haircut. What's the reasoning? So that we won't enter their mishmeret, which started every new Shabbos, as if they were uh, unkempt. All right? Tanu Rabbanan, a new bright. Melech, mistaper b'chol yom. The king got a haircut every day. Okay? Kohen Gadol, me'erev Shabbat. The Kohen Gadol got his haircut once a week, erev Shabbos. The erev Shabbos, right? Kohen Hedyat, a regular Kohen. Echat l'shloshim yom, once in every 30 days. Melech mistaper b'chol yom ma'itama. Why did the king get a haircut every day? Amar Rabbi Abba Bar Chazavta, he says, Amar Rakra, according to a pasuk, Melech b'yofyo b'chazena enecha, that you should be able to see the king, and it says Yeshayom, in his uh, glory, his beauty, That's right? He has to be well kept. All right. Where Kohen Gadol may erev Shabbat le erev Shabbat once a week. Maitama, what's the reasoning? Amar Rav Shmuel Bar Yitzchak. He said, Ho'il u'mishmarot mitchad shot. Okay, since the each mishmeret started brand new each Shabbos, he had to look good for the other Kohanim. Okay, right for Shabbos. Kohen hediyat echad l'shloshim yom minalan. Why only once a month for the Kohen, right? A regular Kohen. Acha pera pera minazir. Because we learn a zera shava from the word pera, the hair being loose or wild or however we want to use that translation from the example of a Nazareth. Ketiv hacha in Yechezkel where it talks about the third temple, the rebuilding, right? Virosham lo yigalchu upera lo yishalechu. Okay, that they would not have their hair growing unkempt wild. Uktiv hatam and bamidbar 
regarding the Nazir, Kadosh Yeh Gadel Pera Se'ar Rosho. Okay, that his hair will be like that. Malahalem, and what's written after following? Shloshim, Afkan Shloshim. So 30 there, and we'll say 30 here with Kohen. V'nazir gufe minala, and regarding the Nazirite, how do we know in and of itself that that's the case? Amar Rav Matna, he says, stam nizirut shloshim yom, that the minimum vow for a Nazirite is 30 days. Minalan, based on what? Amar Kra, says the Pasuk. Yihia v'gematria tlatin havi, right? Because he says the word yihia comes out to shloshim as a number. Amar le Rav Papa Labai. This Papa is challenging a Bai or asking a question. Vadilma Achi Amar Rachmana Loli Voklal. Okay, maybe it says the issue is not to let it grow at all. Okay, Amar le, he says him, Ihavakativ Lo Yishal Chenu Pera. If it had been written that way, in that order of the Pasuk, Okay, then Kidika Amar, then, then you could say like you're trying to explain it, right? Hashta Dichtiv, but now that it's written Upera Lo Yishalechu, that it's written that way, Pera Lahave, okay? Right, it means he's got to have the hair to allow it to, to grow wild, so to speak, to let it grow. Shluchehu Delo Lishlechu, Delo Lishlachu, right? Okay, so therefore, what about uh, there to be said? Yihachi afilu ha'idna nami. And that's the case, that's true today too. Does he have to have hair? What, the Kohen? What if it's he's bald? He can't serve? That's not, that's not considered a mum. It's not considered a mum. Right. Okay. But, and on very, very few people are totally bald. Most have the plain. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, follically challenged, what we say. That's <laughs> uh -huh. But the Gemara says, wait a second, can't we compare this to the whole issue of being able to drink wine? Namely, and Bizman, okay, Biahuda Asu. Okay, whereas drinking wine is during the time that he might enter the base Hamikdash area, that's where it's prohibited. Shelobizman via Shari. Okay, but when he's not going to be entering the base Hamikdash area, Kohen is permitted to drink wine. Afhachanami, maybe here too. Okay, Vahatanya says the Gemara. But aren't we taught elsewhere in a bright? Rabbi Yomer says, Omer ani kohanim asurim yayin le'olam. That Rebbe says, okay, I would say that kohanim should be prohibited from drinking wine whatsoever. Aval kilkalto. What can I say except that his... Uh, the misfortune resulted in an advantage for him. Va'amar Abaye. And so Abaye says, Keman shatu ha'idne kahani chamra. Again, according to whom then? Today are Kohanim permitted to drink wine? To Rebbe, according to Rebbe, as we go over to the next Amud. Miklau the Rabbanan Asre. From here, we would gather then that the rabbis prohibited it. Ma'itama, what's the reasoning? And we say, Mehera Yibane Besa Mikdash, may the Besa Mikdash be rebuilt soon. Uba'inen Kohen, Hara'uila Avoda. And then we would need Kohanim that are fit to do the service, right? Veleka, but then we wouldn't have them. If, they, if you let them go drinking, you know. Every Mundik and Dunashtik, you know what's going to happen. Okay. Hacha Efshard in the Sapir. Here then, it's possible, and that's, that would be make the parallel to getting a haircut. 
va'ayim, and then they can come. Yeah, right. So what happens? Harau la avodah v'leka hacha efshar de mispar va'ayim. Okay, so we're going to say with regards to the drinking, it's one thing. But in regards to the issue of a haircut, he can always go get a haircut. And, right, and then he can come and serve in the avodah. Right, that's the point. Ihachi, if that's the case, what about the following, says the Gemara? Shtuye yayin, nami afshar degane purta. Maybe if he had a little oh, too much to drink, we can say he can sleep it off. Right? I can sleep a little bit. Va'ayel, or he can and then come. Kid Rami Bar Abba. I like Rami Bar Abba says the Amar Rabbi Ba'arma who said, Derech Mil Vishena Kol Shahu. If he walks for a mile or sleeps a little bit, Mafigin et Hayayim, that will uh, sober him up. It will, it will move the after effects of the wine. Right? Valav mi itmar Allah. But wasn't it said about this? Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rabba Bar Abua, who said, Lo shanu ala kasheshata shi'ura vi'it. That was only taught when he only drank, let's say, a shot glass full. Okay? Ravis. A small amount. Aval shata yotem ravis. If he drank more than a ravis, okay? He had a few shots. Kol shikain shaderech matridato vishina mishkarto. All the more, he says, like if he drank more than a ravis, then walking would be a difficult thing for him. It would tax him more, and sleep, again, would make him even more uh, in, in drowsy, handle. more inebriated. Okay, it wouldn't make him work, right? Okay. Rav Ashiyama, Shtuye Yayim, Demachle Avoda. He says, Rav Ashi gives a different explanation. The fact that he would be intoxicated or drinking, that profanes the sacred service. Gazru Baho Rabbanan. Therefore, the rabbis decreed, okay, what they did. Paru Arosh, the low machle avoda, but the fact that his hair is unkempt, okay, all right, what happens? That does not necessarily profane the uh, avoda, the sacred service. Therefore, lo gazru baho rabbanan. The rabbis did not make any kind of a decree in that situation. Okay, may tivet. We'll challenge that with another bright. The Elu Shahain Bum right? The Elu Okay, but we have a Brighton that says the following implying Kohani could be punishable by death under certain okay, under certain circumstances, right? Shatuyayan Upruye Rosh. It signifies both that by Deshamayam, right? It could be those who are inebriated or those who have unkempt hair. So the Gemara responds, Regarding the fact that the one is intoxicated, the Torah specifically defines and spells that out. Why? Because it's written, Yayin v'shechar al a clear prohibition, right? El apruye rosh, Minalan, but based on the question of unkempt hair, how do we know this? Bechtiv, again, citing the Pasuk from Yechezkel, Vrosham lo yigalchu, upera lo yishulcharikim. Uketiv batre, and after that Pasuk it's written, Vyayin lo yishtu ko kohen bevoam el chatzer hapnimi. Again, connected with Yechezkel. So what happens? And what do we do? Ve'it kush. And we make an association. Perue rosh l'shtuye yayin. Between the unkempt hair and the drinking of wine. Ma shtuye yayin b'mita, rosh b'mita. So the implication is one, 
has that Bide Shemaya Mita, so likewise the other. Umina, and from this, Imash to Yeyayan, the Machle Avoda. If what we're saying then, that one who is inebriated uh, profanes the sacred service, Af Priye Rosh, the Machle Avoda. It would appear then that those with unkempt hair also, uh, as a result, uh, would uh, profane the avod. Yes. Okay. The it's be mita shemayim number one. Okay, and number two, uh, the, my association with this, okay, was the fact that people would be watching the Kohanim, and if they saw a Kohen with unkempt hair, it would take... Sniff his breath. No, 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 but they, it would take their uh, attention away from the Avoda, okay? In some place, I think I remember that that's part of the issue, even still with Duchening, okay, and certain things today, too. Well, no, because you're not allowed to look. Right. Right, but that, but, why aren't you allowed to? Well, that, that you, then, then you might look too at like, you too know, likely to look. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It doesn't have the proper grace of Godam. Okay. He's missing a beggar. Yeah. And the second thing is that his clothing are soiled. Okay. We mentioned the clothing earlier, but. It was mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. we're not allowed to wash it. <laughs> right. So, in, so you show up with the. He could, ha he could wash it on. Yeah, but if it got soiled, right. you see, he doesn't know. Don't say that. You know, no, nobody has eyes behind their head. Uh -huh. but if he's no, missing right. one, of the, one of the appropriate begotten. No. Okay. It's interesting that I don't mention those. Well, they're talking about Basman Hazel. Mm -hmm. All of this is still is Basman Hazel. What are when the there's no still on Kahan. Okay. So you don't. So, 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 so we know the halachas by the time they come. That's the reason why we practice. Right. Okay, good. Lo ki it kush. Okay. No, says the Gemara. When they make the association, the mita who de it kush. They made the association in regards to the statement about Mita Bide Shamayam, but not in regards to the whole issue of profaning the, the um, Avoda. Okay? All right, let's go on now. Amarle Ravina, this is Ravina the Rav Asha. Okay? So he asks a lot, very logical question. You've cited Psukim from Yechezkel, okay? That Yechezkel is, in a sense, prophesying the coming of the next, of the third temple, okay? What happened, all right? Ha mekame da'ata Yechezkel, before Yechezkel, man amra, who said these things, okay? In other words, if it's not written in the Torah, and certainly from a Navi, we can't deduce new halachas, Okay, so given that, that's my question. He says, Amarle Ula Ta'ame. And he says, then, according to your logic, your reason, Had Amar Rav Chista. Where Rav Chista here, where Rav Chista says, Davar Zemi Torat Moshe, Lo Lamanu. That if it comes from Torah, okay, and we didn't learn it, Midivrei Kabbalah Lamanu. Can, is it possible to learn it from prophets? But we've just said, it's very clear that you do not learn new halachas from, from a Navi. Okay, but what happens? What about the following? Ko ben nechar areil, lev, va'areil basar, lo yavo el mekadashi, l'shorteni. Okay, so in other words, we might say if he doesn't have the appropriate, um, Attitude, intent. Uh, if he's not, if he's right, not these kinds of things. Or if he's on the surface. Right. Okay, well, I, I, I like the combination. If he's neither physically uncircumcised or motion, emotionally, spiritually, okay. okay, uncircumcised, he should not serve. 
Hamikame da ata yechezkel man amra. If you're saying that, given that criteria before yechezkel, okay. Also, to how could it? Who before yechezkel could have said it? Ela gamra gamirla. But we say it's a tradition. A masora halacha lemoshe misa. Vaata yechezkel vaasmecha akra. And Yechezkel came and he attached it, right, to a pasuk. Hachanami here too. Gamra gamirla va'ata Yechezkel va'asmecha akra. Okay, and Yechezkel came and he basically attached it to a pasuk. So the Gemara tells us, ki gamiri, when he, we learned it, halacha lamita, that was for the halacha in regards to the question of the Mita bide shamayim la achule avoda lo gamire, but in terms of its possibility of of uh, umtkemter um, issue, we didn't apply it and didn't learn it for that purpose. Okay, now here we're going to get back to uh, Megillus Tami. All right, very appropriate, I might add, that we're learning this on Chanukah. Okay, all right. Wherever it's written in Megillah Tanit not to conduct a eulogy, the day before it is prohibited, the day after it is permitted. Okay? Tana Rabbana says a brighter. Ilain Yomye Delo Lehit Anaa Bahom. These are the days in which it's not permitted to fast on them. And some of them not to eulogize on them. Me Rosh Yacha, the Nisan, from Rosh Kodesh Nisan, Va'ad Timnaya Be, until the eighth day thereof, Itukam Tmida, when the Tamid was established. Not to uh, eulogize on them. Okay. From the eighth on it, until the end of the festival of Pesach. We established the holiday of Shavuos. So that gives the day. Right? So that whole period. The low the mispad bahon, not to eulogize on that. Right? Amar Mar, and the master had said, Me Rosh Yarcha de Nisan at Nayabe, from Rosh Kodesh Nisan until the eighth thereof, he to come to me that the Tamid was established. The low the mispad, not to eulogize. Lamali, why is that the case? Okay, Me Rosh Yarcha. Why do you have to include the reference to Rosh Chodesh there? Lema mitre Nisan. Let him say from the second day of Nisan, and Rosh Chodesh being the day before, you would know that because you've already just been told you can't eulogize the day before a day to them. Right? Because, because Rosh Chodesh also is included. Right? So, so the so Gemara is going to tell us. That's uh, what it's going to yeah, say. Yeah. Right? The Rosh Chodesh, Gufe Yom Tov Hu Ba'asur. But Rosh Chodesh, you don't have to rely on the statement that it's only a day before a date, because Rosh Chodesh itself is a holiday itself. You don't have to mention it at all. Right? Because it's not, you don't need it on the list. It's automatically a holiday. And no fast day. Va'amar Rav, and Rav says, Lo Nitzracha, no, it was needed. But rather today, the day before. The Shalifanav, Nami, the day before also. If Rosh Chodesh, certainly you can't. We do have the principle that in, written in Megillah Tani that the day before such a date, it's also forbidden to eulogize. Okay? What happens? Rosh Chodesh, Doraita, Rosh Chodesh is a holiday 
as we consider from a Torah mandate. <laughs> and a Torah mandated item does not require support, strengthening. Okay? The Tanya, as we're taught, Ayamim Ha'ele, Haktuvim Megillat Tani, these days which are written in the scroll of Tani, Lifnehem Velachrehem Asurim, before them and afterwards it's prohibited. Shabbatot Viamim Tovim, Hain Asurim, Lifnehem Ulachrehem Mutarim. Okay, as regards to Shabbos or Yom Tov, it's prohibited before them. Right. Pain asurin lifnehem. Pain asurin. Pain asurin. They are prohibited. Lifnehem lacharehem mutari. Before them and afterwards, it's permitted. Uma hefresh ben zelaze. And so, what is the distinction? What is the difference? The distinction between them. Right? Asks the Gemara. Halalu divrei Torah. These are Torah mandates. The divrei Torah ein tzrichin chizuk. They don't need, need support or strengthening. Halalu, these others, divrei sofrim. They are rabbinic. The divrei sofrim, tzrichin chizuk. That needs support. Amar mar, as we begin to finish up, says the master, mitimnaya be ad sof muada from the 8th until the end of the holiday festival Pesach, and the holiday of Shavuot was then reestablished, not to fast, not to eulogize. Why till the end of the holiday? Let him simply say, up until the holiday, and the holiday itself is a holiday. The occasion, okay, I'll say itself is a holiday, and therefore it's forbidden. Amara Papa says Rav Papa, Kidamar Rav, as was said by Rav. Lo Nitzracha Asur Yom Right? Only to the day before it. Achanami here too. Lo nitzracha ela le'asur yom shala acharav. Here too, he's going to say, okay, those are only included right, the, the day after. Keman, according to whom? To Rabbi Yossi, according to Rabbi Yossi, and we'll see what Rabbi Yossi says. You didn't go into the, the explanation of why from the 8th of Nisan until after the Pesach, there were public debates between the Daisusin of the Rabbana. As to whether or not Shavu is that year we come out on a Wednesday or must be on a Sunday. Right. Right. That's, and that debate was finalized. In the last right. The Bothesians were like the Sadducees. Okay. And they claimed, therefore, that was when it says, Maharat Shabbat. You had to count seven exactly. direct weeks, on and therefore it would also always be on Sunday. By the Sorry. way, La Havdiel, Michael, you know, therefore, that that's what the church showed. Yeah, well, of course. They like the fancy clothes. Well, that I don't know. <laughs> they, they modeled their business.